This is your captain of the Exiles Hope, and I just want to thank you for choosing our airline. There will be no in-flight snacks. There will be no in-flight entertainment. The plane will shake throughout the entirety of the flight, and we'll be lucky to make it there in one piece. But you chose this warrior to pilot a, a starship, so you're getting what you paid for. Warrior is in a very precarious situation to where it is currently sitting at the worst class in the game, but I do have a very interesting Warrior deck that is not only going to entice all the control players, but might entice some of my infinite combo players. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button to be notified about our future updates because we are going to be talking about Warrior today and why it is debatably the worst class on HS Replay. Not necessarily because Control Warrior is bad, but the meta is a scary meta that is aiming to kill you as quickly as possible or deal absurd amount of damage so the meta essentially has turned into hyper aggro hyper combo or extreme armor gain in several classes and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today is what exactly is going on under the hood with warrior because it really seems like if you want to win with warrior your best options are to play Dummy Warrior and Odin Warrior and Dummy Warrior and Odin Warrior again because according to HS Replay at the Legend rank, it's, it's the only archetype for Warrior that is able to go above a 50% because Hydration Warrior, Control Warrior, Highlander Warrior, all of these decks are just, well, I guess there's no other way to put it, they are just simply too slow to compete with the meta that we're seeing right now. It's not impossible for Odin to do well, but there's a lot of rogues that are kind of just scamming the game with a bunch of giants, and if you can't solve that with your brawl, you're taking all that damage right to the face. So today we're going to be looking at one deck in particular because when you look at Legend, there's a lot of warrior warriors and on HS Guru this deck is classified as hydration warrior and there's another deck floating around that is called fizzle warrior where there are two different decks we'll look at one for the clip for the game clips coming up ahead while addressing both of the decks in this intro right here but let's go ahead and take a look at HS Guru because HS replay doesn't really have anything promising for warrior but when you go over to HS Guru, it's kind of the same tale because, again, what you're seeing right now is Swarm Shaman, Zarimi Priest, Dungar Druid, Cycle Rogue. These are the most common decks right now, and unfortunately, Warrior really doesn't deal with the Swarm Shamans as effectively as you might think because it's just a matter of the Shaman's going to have a board, the Shaman's going to have a board, and the Shaman's always going to have a board. Are you as a Warrior going to have an AoE every single turn? That's really not how you need to play that matchup. You need to play your AoEs at the right time in order to shut down what the Shaman can do but your resources to do that are very limited. So Warriors is kind of struggling right now because of the token decks that are very common, the OTK aggro decks essentially like Zarimi Priest, and Dungar Druid just vomiting a bunch of stats very similar to Cycle Rogue. So the meta is just not volatile for Warrior right now because if we take a look at what's going on in the statistics side of the, of the meta... Warrior only has one deck above 50%, which is Mech Warrior at barely a 0.5% popularity. It's starting to get a lot more popular because I went up against my first uh, Mech Warrior yesterday. So I'm imagining there's going to be more people that are going to try it. Odin Warrior still th sitting at a 3% uh, percent popularity, but barely a 48% uh, win rate. The Hydration Warrior, which is going to be the name of the deck on this website that we're taking a look at. And then there's Control Warrior. I'm not really sure what makes this different from Odin Warrior outside of just running no Odin. And then there's Highlander Warrior good 44% love to see it being bad Janai warrior 42% excavate warrior 41% fizzle warrior and then at the very bottom of the barrel is rock and roll warrior somehow making enough popularity to to see its stats on HS guru but then when we take a look at top 10k Warrior completely falls off. Hydration Warrior, Odin Warrior, Control Warrior, Highlander Warrior, Fizzle Warrior are the decks that are seeing play, but they are completely unpopular and almost really unfavored into the metagame. But then as you go into top 1k, it's still sitting around the same exact win rate. So um, I hate to say it, but Warrior is just not well suited for this metagame, especially at the top of the ranks. But I am still wanting to recommend Hydration Warrior is actually a really fun deck that we're gonna be taking a look at. But I also wanted to address this other Fizzle Warrior deck because essentially what we're doing is an infinite Fizzle combo, but we're also fitting it within the Control Warrior archetype with the uh, Hydration Station as our, uh, as our sustain. But there's this other deck right here, which I might play in a future video, I'm not quite sure yet, but this deck right here is all in on just drawing the deck, getting the combo, removing the board as quickly as you can so you can set up that infinite ceaseless combo. So this might be, you know, a sleeper deck if you're wanting to do more stuff with like fizzle combos and whatnot. 
haven't tested it myself, not gonna officially recommend it, but this deck looks really sweet, so I wanted to give it a little bit of a shout out. But the rest of this, you know, Highlander Warrior, Odin Warrior, High, uh, Highlander Druid, it's really sad that if you wanna do a fizzle combo, Warrior is really rough on trying to make that happen. And here are the decks that are at top 1000 that Warrior is really struggling with. There are people trying it and there is a deck at top 1000 legend with exactly a 50% win rate only after 56 games, not the greatest sample size in the world. But this is to tell you that the deck can thrive in one way or another as long as you find that right pocket meta and you're not just going up against the scam decks. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on with this deck because, oh boy, there's one screenshot that I need to show you, cause, oh my god, the potential of this deck. Because if you guys remember this screenshot, this is the potential of this deck, except we just don't run the pigs. Like, theoretically speaking, you could get yourself to this position of having 80 mana, over 1500 armor, and going up against a druid with kill jade and minions that are probably just like absolute, I have no idea how, the, how big these minions are, but I guess a 42-42 amalgam, is a pretty good indicator of how big these cards actually are. So yeah, there is a potential of this deck to just go infinite, and if you wanna put in the uh, the pigs, for example, they're not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but this is kind of like going all in on just being like completely uninteractive and just gaining a bunch of armor. This would be part of your infinite combo. You could probably run one and then snapshot and then like start duplicating them to get extra copies. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you how good the Rockstar is. I am going to sit here and tell you that this deck is not the greatest, but it is a ton of fun. So the entire point of this deck is to just gain armor and do your fizzle combo. So the cards that you want to that you want to keep in your mulligan are going to be your shield block, your all you can eat, your new heights, your tortolan traveler, and there are some matchups where you can debatably keep your arcanite defense crystal but only up against the slowest of the slow matches because it's absolutely fine if your tortolan traveler just draws a taunt which is your arcanite defense crystal or your zilliax. So the whole point of this deck is to essentially make taunts with your zilliax with your uh, launched version of the starship because it also gains 12 armor when two pieces die so that way your hydration station brings back the zilliax the uh the, the the launch starship and then potentially either an arcanite defense crystal or if you play ignis you can get eight mana uh, minions from a 10 mana weapon and then sometimes you get some taunts that get in the way but every now and again you might get like an alakir or some kind of weird like stargazer or whatever if you get really lucky off of your ignis so there is some potential high rolls from your hydration station that are not usually the norm in this type of deck, but I do think it's very interesting that Exodar finds its way into this list, but I'm going to tell you this card really just doesn't feel worth it, in my opinion. Because there's only really two ways of playing this card. It's either to gain the armor immediately, or you do crew transport in order to just get extra copies of the taunts, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but this card being seven mana and a warrior deck that already has a lot of expensive cards and it doesn't actively remove the board, this just really doesn't feel like it's helping out the deck. Maybe if you were to like fizzle another Arcanite defense crystal, you could do something crazy, but that is already a ridiculously demanding setup where all you need to do is just do uh, do the fizzle combo uh, with like a hydration station and you're essentially doing the exact same thing while sustaining yourself. So Exodar could be a card you could throw out of the deck if you really don't like it. I personally didn't like it, uh, but if you want to just go all in on gaining armor and being Starship Warrior, then I guess you could run this, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the last thing I'm going to say about this deck is going to be the actual combo because a lot of people get very lost in the sauce whenever fizzle is involved. For this particular combo, it's a lot easier to set it up because you are playing Warrior that has the potential of having 16 mana if you're not fizzling the extra mana from the uh, from the new heights into the combo. Which is the only way that you can gain upwards of 80 mana is if you were to do this infinite combo with uh, the new heights available in your hand, but you really don't need to be doing that. That's just like, that's putting a hat on a hat and putting mana on top of mana crystals when you already are drowning in mana. I know, common druid problem, but Warrior's pretty much pseudo druid at this point. So what you want to do is you want to fizzle your Zola the Gorgon as well as some form of a combo, mostly going to be, you know, like Hydration Station, uh, Ceaseless Expanse, maybe even like a Ham if you're going up against someone that has a lot of cards on their deck, or potentially even a, a Dirty Rat if you want to run a Dirty Rat and throw cards out of your opponent. I would actually recommend running this over Exodar 100% because of that synergy. Because if you were to play your Fizzle, have your Zola, your Dirty Rat, your Ceaseless Expanse, as well as your Hydration Station, every 
single turn, you can essentially take a minion from your from your opponent's hand to deny them having any way of dealing with the combo. If you're going up against Fizzle decks, it also stops the, the infinite Fizzle stuff from happening, so you automatically win the mirror. So Dirty Rat into Ceaseless Expanse, remove everything, everything dies, so that way you can play hydra uh, Hydration Station to not only threaten a board, but you threaten even more life gain, so that way as soon as you draw a snapshot, you can do it all over again. So this is a deck that's extremely difficult in order to master, but oh man, is it fun when you get to go up against a slower deck that just has to sit there and deal with the infinite value game. And if you guys remember the kind of content I like, I love uh, Nazoth decks, for example. And this kind of reminds me as like a modern day Nazoth deck in the Great Dark Beyond. So maybe we get more decks like this where value is very incentivized, but I think this is a very epic way of being able to play Warrior outside of just slamming Odin, which is technically something you can still do. I. I found this deck on uh, on Twitter. I did not make this uh, list myself. And essentially, the way that I like to describe this as, we're gonna play a normal deck, and then if I need the oh shit panic button in order to end the game immediately, I do have Odin as an actual win condition in case something goes wrong or a dirty rat gets played at the wrong time. There is a way of being able to sustain. And if you're really not fun, you could still play the boom boss and delete your opponent's deck. Because if you were to do the infinite combo with boom boss, for example, then it doesn't matter how many cards are, are being being added into your opponent's deck. It's just absolutely degenerate. So that's what the ETC is. I know I didn't talk about it the entire video, but there was a reason why, because it's essentially just the legendaries that we know are good, that we don't want to put into the deck because we know how good they are. And then essentially it just becomes Odin Warrior with extra steps or Boom Boss Warrior with extra steps. So why not just get rid of those, challenge yourself, play a fun version of Starship Warrior and see exactly what happens when warriors start crashing down the starship. And don't forget, if you do enjoy this kind of content, feel free to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and check out the Patreon if you want to support the content directly. So thank you so much for making it to the end of this deck breakdown, and we'll see you for the next video. Okay, is this going to be the exact same game? Alright, instrument tech on two. Aha ha! He's actually playing Pipsy, it looks like. I will hold on to this so that way I could do this, and if I need to play this in the coin, I have the option. I smell golden in their waters. The gabaze? Wait, what's the gabaze? Gabbage. Trying to trying to practice my uh my New Jersey accent. You can't tell me vacuum space doesn't sound like a cool card. Wait, it's known as Space Vacuum? Uh, Space, a uh, 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 Vacuum in Space would be a cool card. But it just depends on, um, Goodbye Board. What the hell is this for? Wait, what? You wanna locate, what, look, wait, wait, look, what location, Dan? Wait a minute, is this guy trying to make the Pipsy Rush? So he's gonna play a dance floor into Pipsy and then rush it? Zé, Jo. Uh, does that reduce Sandcastle? No, because Sandcastle is a minion in your hand. It's not a location. I can't tell. I ate a space pirate. Okay. And now two space pirates. Dude, I want to say this is a... A Lanessa deck of some kind. Is... Are you running... The busy peon for a, a shack? Is that what's going on here? That Zilliac's draw was actually the worst draw possible because now I don't have any more taunts in my deck. I guess that's, I guess that's the last taunt. Prison of Yogg-Sarod Paladin, Grillmaster to get seven mana Yogg. Free to, this, dude, this isn't even free to play Paladin. See, he's got epics. I feel like this has to be like some kind of Lanessa deck. He's smoking something all right. He's smoking some good shit, dude. He's coming up with the cool archetypes. What can I say? Love, hi. Good guys, bad guys, and I don't want to do this because I don't want to just gain, I don't want to just draw two uh, in addition to playing this. It just doesn't really feel like it does anything here. I can wait. 
I, I remember being around during that time, and Secret Paladin was considered a meme until suddenly it took over the meta. I don't think it's Pipsy anymore, man. Here's why. If, you, if you're playing Pipsy, you wouldn't play Grillmaster. Grillmaster would draw your Zilliax every time. So I really don't know what's going on here. No idea. What? This has to be Yogg. I legitimately can't think of another reason why you would build a deck this way. Nick Nat. Oh, okay, it is Shaq. I just don't see how I lose here. Freeze Mage was definitely one of my favorite decks, but I think that Wallet Warrior and Handlock go way harder than Mysterious Challenger Paladin. Back with the Paladin high roll uh, curve was Mysterious Challenger and si No, dude, no, it was, it was, uh, oh God, I don't remember what the one drop was, but it was uh, Shielded Minibot on two. Oh God, what, what what was the curve? It was Shielded Minibot on two, something on three, Piloted Shredder on four, Sludge Belcher on five, Mysterious Challenger on six, Dr. Boom on seven, uh, Rag on eight. But I can't remember what the the, the, the one and the two uh, curve was. All right. Well, yeah, there's mini, but what was the three? What was what was the three drop? Oh, wait, yeah, Zombie Chow on, well, Muster for Battle, there we go, okay. Zombie Chow or Seeker Keeper on one, Mini Bot on two, Muster for Battle on three. <laughs> Piloting Shredder on four. There is no way I am dead. Actually, I could very easily be dead here. This guy's going all in on just making Lanessa work. I don't think he need to go this hard, though. Well, if he's going for it, we have to be dead, right? Glow sticks are 12, 24. This isn't gonna be enough. I don't think this is going to be enough, guys. Because he's got to kill the taunt. Yeah, he didn't make it. He, we saw him do the attack, but... Glow stick on the, uh, on the, 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 the taunt minion. No, it was a damage problem. Like, the, 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 the taunt got in the way. Not only is it stopping the damage from hitting me directly, but it's also gaining me armor. This is a very well-executed turn, in all honesty. Like, look at what he did. Like, he almost did it. I'm at seven now. That was definitely a close one. That was definitely, I mean, dude, A plus for deck building. Like seriously, like the fact, I mean, this is the matchup that he wants. I don't think this is gonna be good for him because like against like any tempo based deck, you are going to get crushed. But this dude essentially just created like the solitaire OTK Paladin. I'm almost out of cards. Who could put a price on such powerful miles of that? I could. That's not going to, Matter unless you play pupils. But even then, your pupils are going to have other cards in them. Rude. But I still heal. And if anything, you just gave me a guaranteed spell for my pupil in order to bring out another card. Yeah, it's, it's over. Why is Ethereal co uh, Oracle a common? The, the rarity of a card should not impact its its power level, in my opinion. There, there's been several common, rares, epic, and legendary cards that have just broken the game. If anything, 
rarity comes down to how simple the effect is most of the time. Epic's got the weirdest things, while legendaries have like the most bombastic effects kind of thing. Yeah, and there are legendaries that are useless, so rarities really don't matter. I would think I'd rather want to just keep the uh, the, the bellowing flames. Do we we really have a poor win rate against Paladin? My God, no crack, no no card cracking above a forty percent. Uh, is this deck a way to deal with Asteroid Shaman? It kind of can be. Sort of. Rarities matter for Arena. That's true. In Standard, though, they don't, really. I might be able to launch the ship on 5. Ooh, we need to play for Curve. I don't need to go all in tempo here. And Legendaries are just supposed to be the cool cards that have, you know, Giga Chad, whatever synergies. Town to perfection. I'm expecting the mini set, uh, Druid Rare. Choose one duplicate, uh, wait. Choose one duplicate the asteroids of your deck. With wait, why would that be a Druid card? Why, why would that be a Druid card? Like, well, Druid has no asteroid synergies. You mean Shaman? Oh, I drew the ham! Ooh, oh boy, exactly what I wanted. Eat Leadrin or something. Ooh! Ooh, ooh, that's a big, that's a big one. Mm, that's a big one right there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my babe, but you have been eaten. Nom nom. Uh oh. I have armor that I'm gaining. So I think that's why I could go ahead and do this move confidently. Because next turn, I've got to deal four AoE, coin out the Zilliax in order to try and not die. Arcane magic. How enigmatic. And if we need to, we have safety goggles into this as well. Okay, weird. That Shadow Step should be an epic like prep though. It's too niche and too unreliable to be a common. Sha Did you just say Shadow Step is unreliable? <laughs> oh, that's, that's a take. Oh, that's a take right there. Shadow Step was unreliable. I don't think I've ever heard that. That's just like, imagine all the people that hate Shadow Step hearing you say that Shadow Step is unreliable. Oh man. Zilliax just still just gets in the way, man. I don't think I can ignore this. It just disrupts way too easily, like way too easily. And this guy just has to deal with it. Repeat that in Zenny's chat. I want to see him go mad. <laughs> delete Shadow Step and Breakdance. I don't think we need to delete them either. I, I, they're, they're both fine cards. I want cards more like Shadow Step in terms of power. Oh, that's rude. It's insane the difference that Librum Paladin has when it doesn't draw the second weapon, right? I think the fact that we eat that we ate Lanessa means this game is just over. I want more cards like Shadow Tap and uh, Shadow Step in terms of utility. The game becomes more fun with more options and abilities. Yeah, there you go. That, I believe that's the correct take as well. Uh, uh, Shadow Step is by definition a card that defends on you having other cards. That's not a bad thing. Why is that a bad thing? 
What's wrong with Shadow Step synergizing with other cards? Why is that a bad thing? I don't really understand the logic. I'm not saying it's bad, just unreliable. I don't agree with that. If you have plenty of card draw, Shadow Step is never unreliable. And just because it's Pocket Trade's opinion doesn't <laughs> doesn't mean anything. Pocket Pocket was right about some things, he was right about, and he was wrong about other things. And if he's, and that was if that was his opinion about Shadow Step, I disagree. <laughs> Let's just draw two, see what we get. I didn't do this fast enough. I should have played this before. This this is just like I feel like I'm I'm doing something wrong. Like, I'm just kind of waiting for something to happen, but, but, but my opponent just cannot draw that last weapon to save their life. And if they're running two instrument techs, that means double instrument tech, or, or second instrument tech and second weapon was literally bottom five. Wow. Okay. Well, now we get to just start doing the infinite, uh, the infinite stuff. As long as we draw the fizzle. Witness true arcane. Just make Shadow Step a priest card and let the misery take over. I don't know if this is correct personally. Winter Sun, one of my absolute favorite bands. This is a band that I was introduced to by Peltire, if you guys remember him. Back from the uh, the, the French Canadian scene. Shadow Step is the kind of card that everyone talks about when it pops off, but uh, but never when it's stuck in your hand and do nothing, uh, waiting until you draw the card until you see what you do with it. My entire point is that Shadow Step is balanced uh, specifically because it could be a dead card. I disagree with that. I think th that's like saying that, oh, Brawl is useless because I'm going up against uh, another control deck. Like, there are going to be good times and bad times to play cards. Also, we outvalued him. Let's go. We actually made it to the end. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of these bad cards. Star of Vulpira would, uh, should silence the starship uh, and destroy the effect, agree or disagree? Uh, if it were to silence the ship, it'd be a little bit too busted, in my opinion. Because like, you don't want that card being playable, I hate to admit. Blizzard has this idea where it's like, oh, if we print, if we print a tech card, people can't get mad at us from the mechanic because we'll just be like, oh, just play the tech card. But playing the tech card is just usually bad. Why would I play a card that has kill a specific type of minion for almost no upgrade. Like for example, Hungry Crab would be an example of a card where it's like, okay, kill a Murloc and gain plus two, plus two. Sure, I can get with that. But if it's just destroy a minion, why am I not just playing a card that says destroy a minion? Specifically, that's why ETC exists. I don't even think you would want it in the ETC though. Why would you want that card in your ETC? You just don't want that card in your deck, period. Because the crab is cute, it's tasty. It looks very delicious too. If it read silence destroy a ship and didn't cost 100 mana, it was uh, it was probably playable. I mean, yeah, but like if you silence the piece, I feel like that just might be a bit too much. Like it, it would be an answer, it'd be a tech card. Would people play it still? Probably not. But then suddenly like, I, I don't know. I just don't think it'd be a good idea. Just, it doesn't sound like something I would want in the game personally. Just typical Italian Pasha. Chicken's pretty good though. I usually wouldn't want to use this for a shield block. The idea of playing ham was like kind of enticing. But number one, we mill a card. Number two, clearing the board was just too good. Bellwing Flames gets a lot worse as the game continues, I think. What in God's green earth are we doing here? Okay. Interesting. Not gonna lie, that card is kind of annoying. But if I draw my Zilliax, I don't have to worry about it. Do you have this 
Schöne Bitte. Well, that card literally only impacted him. <laughs> like, all that did was just... What? Well, we're gonna have to do some drawing now, aren't we? Ham is pretty much useless now. All right, kill Jaden Warrior. I mean, Ham eats stats, but here, think about it, man. I'm essentially playing a six mana five five. Why, why do I care about that? I, I eat a card and he still gains stats, but he doesn't really do anything. He's not disrupting anymore. He's not a disruption tool now. I think it's gain armor, draw cards. Hopefully get something playable. Got a shield block. Okay. I'm really just trying to find the... Okay, I can do this for Odin. Okay. There's always room for dessert. I'm just doing this to get it out of hand while I'm not under pressure. Next turn I can launch the ship, I can play this, I can get the Odin. I could honestly just play ETC and then play Odin in the same turn. That's not even that bad of an idea by itself. Let's do it. This just seems like the best turn. Alright. I always thought it was weird to put Odin in the ETC, but with this kind of deck where you're just trying to do infinite stuff, you don't even really need it. But since I've got the mana and I'm waiting. Why is Zola main deck and Odin ETC? Because the whole point of the deck is to do the infinite stuff. You're essentially hiding behind the armor, and you're focusing on gaining armor to where Odin is just kind of there if you need it. But most of the time, you're just probably gonna ETC for boom boss. The perfect amount of mana. And now we can actually get close to doing the infinite stuff. I mean, I don't even need a hydration station in this. Yeah, yeah, actually I do. Because then I can bring back the ship a whole bunch of times. What if you win 20 turns sooner by main decking Odin? I mean, why is Odin Warrior not all over the place right now then? I gotta spend mana. I don't even think I care about this. I'm literally just gonna play it. I don't care about getting another one of these. It's so, it's so pointless. Odin dies to Asteroid, well there you go. So this deck being able to play around Asteroids is probably the reason why it started emerging. It's an infinite loop, so like you don't wanna go for value, you wanna go for like the combo. And the combo is Fizzle in the uh, Ceaseless Expanse, the Zola, and maybe even like a Hydration Station. So that way you just kill everything every single time. So right now I just need to draw through my deck. Get Ignis for a 10. Wind Fury, deal six damage. Okay, that's always armor. What am I talking about? I will not be denied. I will not be denied. I will not be denied. This game is just probably gonna be over before uh, before we even start doing the combo. Can you imagine you make a, a riff so good that you literally end a marriage and get married because of it? Yeah, dude, this 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 song, yeah. A lot of people call Eric Clapton uh, a simp for making this song. 
Because it was written for a woman that apparently didn't love him. Maybe I'm misremembering it, but I just remember that someone told me in chat. <laughs> They're like, have you act do you actually know the reasons why he made this song? Oh, dude, no, I don't want to win yet. No. No, I don't want to win the game right now. Well, there you go. I'm a simp for chat. I mean, chat pays me money. They're, they're more so my employers. Oh God, oh God. Oh God, I don't want to eat more of that. Oh, I hate green beans. They're fine, but uh, I, just, uh, I just, I can't eat green beans. Uh, spitters are quitters indeed. Actually, yeah, I would be simping if I paid you guys money, not the other way around. If anything, you guys are my simps. So how about that, Goomba? I mean, this is just really good. What kind of metal do I like? Any uh, preferred subgenre? I like, um, personally for me, my favorite type of metal is usually progressive because I love the ridiculous compositions that people come up with. As a musician, I'm not just listening because I think it's cool. I'm listening and like taking notes. We got lucky. I feel like, like it's, it's just always new heights. New Heights Crystal into Zilliax. Mayday? Does it have Adam's vocals on it or is it still the original vocalist? Well, hold on a minute. The the cover of this seems to be Is this this is Adam and the other guy screaming at each other, right? Dude, let's fucking go. I love how they're just owning it now. They're, they're just saying, yeah, we're friends now. I mean, they, they were friends. They just had creative differences and they took the band a different direction. But then Adam got homesick apparently and everyone else is like, you know what, Adam, we miss you too. And I and I like and I love I love Three Days Grace from the very beginning, dude. Like I, I fell in love with that with Adam's vocals. Kind of fell off uh, once they got the new guy. But yeah, I'm really happy that he's back in the band. My favorite industrial metal song is "There's a Tuna on the Wall" by Bread Box of Sonar. Dude, what? There's a tuna on the wall. Stop. Stop. There's a tuna on the wall. Where do I even begin with that? Like the first thing that came to my mind was like. Uh, I think uh, the band called Cake, like that, uh, you know, uh, like he's going the distance, like like a voice like that, where it's like, there's a tuna on the wall, <laughs> like it's, it's the first thing that comes into my head is like some kind of a uh, cake song. I scarped that down really really quickly. <laughs> All right, hold on. I want to pay attention to this. Oh, hello, Adam Vocals. Oh, that's not Adam Vocals yet. Hold on. This is fucking Three Days Grace, dude. Let's go. They're fucking back. This seems a little bit better. Wind Fury for the third time. Oh, how does he do it? My hand is full. Let's go, man. We can listen to the exactly. We can listen to the to the uh, lyrics without being cringe about it. <laughs> I think it actually might be boom boss time. Kind of hate to do it to him, but yeah, I just should. I actually just should have gotten the Oda in my hand. I was thinking that like destroying his deck before he gets the good cards would also be pretty good, considering that I also have Fizzle with this. 
We're kind of prolonging his death doing it this way. <laughs> I don't even need the fizzle value in all honesty, now that I have this just to curb with it. Like, I'm not gonna get the fizzle snapshot right now. And if I do, it's probably still gonna be irrelevant. Clan the reviewer song, just add the song to the playlist. No, review a song or a video is more so just like, it's, I, I think I have to change that because there should be a difference where it's like review a song where I listen to it and then give you my take on like what makes it a good or bad song. That's kind of what that's supposed to be. But I put video in the same thing because every now and again, people would give me like small like minute long videos to kind of like react to. But I think now something that I should do if I'm actually going to be serious about doing like react content, which I am interested in doing. Then like we should have like a... Uh, uh, a tab in the Discord where you guys just put in a bunch of videos and then I just go through them in order. But yeah, recently with um, uh, song requests, I haven't been able to do them because sometimes Spotify screws up. Although recently, Spotify has actually been behaving itself. We haven't had any issues today and we didn't have any issues last stream. So what does that say, chat? <laughs> I'm learning, figuring it out, <laughs> figuring it out. I think it doesn't really, I mean, eh. I kind of regret not picking Odin because now it's like the game is continuing on. Throw out the, the Ceaseless, play like the five mana card. And then the next turn I have Sleep Under the Stars in order to cycle into the deck. So this actually might be, the, okay. Even though this wasn't the best way to win, this might be the game where we can show this off. But for the record, if we picked Odin, this game would have been over this turn. This deck keeps you hostage more than your opponent because you still have to think. I mean, hey, if you like that, then is that really keeping me hostage? If anything, it's keeping me, uh, it's keeping me engaged. At the same time, it could just be GG after I do this and summon a bunch of eight drops. Could I, I could also just launch the shit. Oh my God, dude, this, this game is Omega over actually. Yeah, dude, it's Omega over. Why are there no pigs? Because it doesn't fit what the deck is trying to do with the infinite stuff. Again, like, it's just like, if your question is why aren't we playing Odin Warrior, you should just be playing Odin Warrior. Well, there you go. If you don't want to use Odin, this is another way of winning the game. You cannot say you are a fan of rock and while also while also saying you are not a fan of cult personality. Got to know you got to know where it comes from. Definitely a compliment. Awesome. Okay. I I don't I don't think I understand the reference though of Archimonde summoning an Uber. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh wait, that's right. Liberum of Wisdom. Oh sh wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Stop it. This guy is playing the funky deck, it looks like. But the funky deck is not going to be able to outvalue what I start doing here. Oh, did I not have another taunt? I will not be denied. Your soul belongs to the I will not be denied. Ooh. If only I had a way of playing another card. <laughs> oh, that destroys the location. It's a well thing. Ah, I see. So it's the sound he makes when he summons a big demon, I'm guessing. All right, well, 4-2.
The deck is working, how, albeit I've not been able to really do the infinite combo yet. Okay, keep the crystal, toss the ETC. This deck makes you choose between winning with Odin or stations. Pretty much. Infinite Fizzle meme is just a- I, I know, but there's a reason why we have it in the deck. Like, if you can- if you queue into, like, another warrior and you do that, you it's just, like, sometimes you just end the game. Granted, there might just still be, like, you know, Odin Wind Fury that you still just lose to, but I don't know. I love the idea. Being able to pop it off would be hilarious. Well, John the Zilliax kind of sucks. It's just for the title of the YouTube video. Pretty much. I mean, there's there's no real meta application for this outside of, holy crap, if you can keep your opponent hostage and gain like a thousand armor like that one uh, screenshot and have like 80 baj bajillion armor as well. It's, it's funny, man. And sometimes all you need is just like a funny high roll in the deck in order to make it uh, playable. And that also doesn't mean that you can't use Zola and Fizzle in other ways that aren't just greed. Sometimes another ceaseless expanse, like just having that that fizzle there is all you need. <laughs> oh boy. Just rolling through the cards, are we? Ham again, dude? Well, I mean, at the same time, this could be good, but it just sucks that I can't protect him. Kind of have to do it this way. Okay. Okay. All right. Eating a starship piece is always going to be good here. Okay. He's going to try and take a hydration. He took my ramp. Okay. He took my ramp. I don't think I appreciate that, sir. Oh crap, this is a demon. Oh, no wonder that card's in here. Okay, now that makes sense. I, I didn't even realize this was a demon. Uh, consistent AoE? Yeah, that's massive. Zilliax. Those are the only minions with tribes. Good odds you get OTK this game if you don't pick Odin. We'll see. Yeah, we just tempo taunts. Like, I could have picked ETC in the Odin, but that would have been just a, a big indicator of what's going to happen next. Hello? So he's trying to take the hydration station. One, two, three. There's a decent amount of spells. Took my ramp again. Okay. This actually might be a problem because he's going to double up. Oh my god, he's doubling up new heights. Holy shit, dude. Oh, this is actually a problem. He's just gonna outvalue me at this point. The year is 2024 and fatigue no longer exists in Hearthstone. <laughs> Dude, this is literally uh we're we're both keeping we're both gonna keep each other hostage here. As long as you don't find biopods, we're fine. So this little tack into here. Get rid of you so you don't get bounced again, because I don't want to lose a hydration station. Prevents Yogg from happening, because I need this minion to die. I hate Sonya. I love Sonya. I am fine with Sonya doing things here, because we're because we're still fine. The game is not anywhere close to being done, so there's no reason to be upset when the, when the Sonya does things. Okay, so we're playing Sonya again. Oh, mama. All right, that's a problem because he's going to duplicate the, the, the... Oh, my God. He's going fucking wide, dude. He's li he's literally living the dream. Oh, my God. He's living the Starship Rogue dream. Yes, my child. Go. I'm not even mad. Oh, my God. He's doing it, dude. My, he's literally living the dream. This is exactly what I want to do. Hmm. 
We could survive this. Tez is gone now. So, pupil. Oh, wait, no, I can't pupil yet. So I guess we're just, I don't, I don't want to hydrate sensation again. I think we're gonna have to play the under the stars draw. Maybe play another spell in order to get the pupil active. Again, this just comes down to biopod, man. If he doesn't find a biopod, we're not under any real threat. What? No! No. No, 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 no. There's only two, there, come on. There's two cards you need to hit. Velrock! No way, man! Vel well, well, there's only one way to win now. There's only one way to win now. Only one, only, only one way to win the game. <sighs> so upset. I'm so upset, dude. I am omega upset. I cannot tell you how upset I really am, but I am so upset. I, I, I like, I can't think of another card out of Velorok that would actually have made a difference. Like, you need a disruption, and that was the disruption card. Okay, that's a good eat. I need to save these because I need them with Odin. The only thing I have going for me right now is that I don't think there's a crystal in this. There's no crystal in it. Next turn, I really gotta do the best I can to just play Odin no matter what. It didn't launch gives me hope. <sighs> we going for armor? Why return the Exodar? Wait, what? Can I get sanitized off the top, please? I think he just threw. Hold on to this for now. I think I think he just literally loses. How do I win? Do it. I have Odin. I get Wind Fury on Ignis, and the game is over. Like I'm just never gonna die, and he literally can't. Like he can't pressure anymore. Imagine passing your turn with 13 with 13 mana. Guys, I played Odin. You guys are acting like I don't have any damage. I played Odin. It's it's so over, man. 
It's funny that we ate both of the crystals and he still gained a crap ton of armor, right? <laughs> I know how much you love priests and res priests in particular, so what if I told you it's back? It's not back. It's not back. Don't you dare don't you dare do this to me. I don't want I don't want Res Priest to be back. I'm fine with Res Warrior and Res and Res uh Druid. But the moment that Priest could do it again, uh-uh, uh-uh. Res Priest. Okay. Oh, this is what he's doing. Okay, hold on. I really need to hit the uh, the sanitize. All right, if there's a time to roll Wind Fury, it's now. Wow, not even Lifesteal, dude, of course. It's actually kind of funny. We're, this is gonna be a fatigue game. We're talking about how, like, you know, there's there's not gonna be any fatigue. He's literally launching the ship for one for one card. He is so out of gas, it's not even funny, dude. I, okay, hold on. What, what's left this hand? What's left in his hand? Let's let's figure this out. Um, it's the Sonia, the Scoundrel, a Ceaseless. There's a Prep that hasn't been played. There's a Quick Pick that hasn't been played, and I think a Dubious Purchase that hasn't that has not been played. So all I need to do is just this. We'll summon an eight drop. Oh, this game is over, by the way. Yes, Bran. Good job. He killed my infinite combo, so I took his life. If you're gonna take away the combo, then I'll have to just play Odin Warrior. Yeah, wow, look at Clark winning with Bran. I can't believe it, dude.